This video ranks the top six NBA free agents changing teams this year and predicts where they'll go. These players may not be superstars at this point in their career, but their relocation will have a massive impact on the future of the franchise they choose to join. Stick around to find out the best talent available in 2020's free agency and the reason why each one's moving on. Welcome back to DFlow Hoops. If you're new here and a basketball fan interested in rankings, predictions, and stories about the NBA, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Number six, Carmelo Anthony. After the Lakers took the Blazers out in five games of their first round series this year, LeBron showed Carmelo some love on Twitter. The King certainly empathizes with what his longtime friend went through, especially these last couple years. For over a year, Anthony struggled to find a home in the NBA, with the majority of teams turning their heads away from the former scoring champ. Nobody wanted to give him a chance until the Blazers did this season. Despite contemplating retirement amidst the uncertainty of his career, Anthony stayed ready and continued to work. His dedication paid off as he eventually became a key piece for Portland throughout the season, and especially through their inspiring run in the bubble to make the playoffs. But as a Blazer, Melo was forced to carry a heavy scoring load next to Damon CJ. But with the Lakers' all-time great duo in the making next to him, Carmelo wouldn't have to worry about contributing like a third option in the final years of his career like he had to in Portland. Don't get it twisted though, Melo was damn consistent in 2019-20 with the Blazers, and while Davis and James were dominant in 2020's playoffs, the Lakers lacked consistency at their small slash power forward spot. Markeith Morris and Kyle Kuzma played that role for the Lakers this past season, and they weren't very effective. Carmelo would also be an excellent positional fit for LA. He's also an effective catch and shoot player who rebounds the ball well. LeBron James led offenses are predicated on shooters making shots on the perimeter to space the opposing defense. Carmelo's role would be carved out nicely in LA. Plus, it would be nice to see part of the Banana Bow crew back together, so we gotta get Melo to LA. Number five, Hassan Whiteside. Whiteside was once a premier center with the Miami Heat, a club that opted to part ways with the center after choosing to make Bam Adebayo their frontcourt threat for the future. After being traded with the Portland Trailblazers as part of a four-team trade, Hassan Whiteside further proved himself capable of being the number one rim protector for a team. At 31, Hassan Whiteside's coming off a four-year, $98 million contract that he signed with the Miami Heat. He'll enter free agency as an unrestricted free agent, which will allow him to choose where he wants to go. Bottom line is, the relationship between Whiteside and the Blazers was never meant to last past this year. The Warriors have already brought on Andrew Wiggins in a trade for D'Angelo Russell ahead of the 2020 trade deadline. And with the signing of a stellar big such as Hassan Whiteside, other than Klay Thompson tragically going out again with an Achilles tear, the Warriors' starting five would look perfectly built around Stephen Curry. Even after drafting James Wiseman, Golden State is still on the market for a big, meaning that Hassan Whiteside has possibly looked at Golden State as an option to utilize his talents as well. Whiteside would pair nicely up front with Draymond Green and present a unique defensive front that complements the offense led by Stefan. Number four, Danilo Gallinari. Given his ability to play small forward or power forward and shoot it from range, he's expected to be a popular free agent target for contending teams. The 32-year-old is fresh off a season in which he averaged 18.7, 5.2 boards, and a career-high 2.9 triples in only 29.6 minutes per game with the OKC Thunder. Gallo's a career 38% shooter from deep, who would give the Heat yet another long-range weapon alongside Duncan Robinson and Tyler Harrow. Gallinari would be a solid addition with a Miami team that could use a scoring option behind Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, especially if Goran Dragic isn't re-signed. Of course, the Heat under Pat Riley have shown they aren't afraid to make win-now moves in the offseason. The decision to acquire Jimmy Butler last summer helped Miami put together a versatile, gritty team that advanced through the Eastern Conference, but after falling short in the NBA Finals, the Heat realized they have some work to do to their roster if they want another chance to win a title. This is especially true with teams like the Celtics, Raptors, the revamped Milwaukee Bucks, and the healthy superstar-led Brooklyn Nets in their conference. 
as they hope to build off their performance from last season. Luckily for Heat fans, their team's considered a front runner for Danilo's services. Number three, Christian Wood. Despite their salary cap situation, the Boston Celtics are still seen as an attractive landing spot for many of the non-top build free agents in the 2020 class. Boston can still afford to ink Christian Wood to a mid-level exception, and moving to a reputable winning organization could be enough for the rising big man to be sold for the Celtics to be his next team. I mean, who wouldn't want to join a team equipped with premium young talent, intelligent vets, one of the league's top coaches in Brad Stevens, and a front office that swings big? After the trade that sent former All-Star Andre Drummond to Cleveland in early February, Wood finally got his starting role, and with it, he simply thrived. Through 12 starts, the 25-year-old big man was an absolute menace, posting stellar averages of 21.9 points and 9.4 boards on 56% shooting from the floor and 41% shooting from deep. As good as the talent that Boston has right now, they could use an upgrade up front, and the versatile offensive mastery of Christian Wood could be the addition that puts them over the top in the East. Number two, Montrez Harrell. The 26-year-old big man's going to be a top offseason priority for a ton of GMs, and a season that fell well short of team expectations to say the least for the cursed LA Clippers. Montrez Harrell still had an outstanding season. After averaging a career-high 18.6 points, Harrell was awarded the NBA Sixth Man of the Year award. The Clippers don't have the cap space to look elsewhere for answers to their 2020 failure, so it makes plenty of sense for the Clippers to throw an offer at the scoring center, but you can expect Harrell to play the field, and I'm predicting he gets more money from another team and moves on from LA. Three teams have the best shot at landing Harrell in my opinion. One, the Toronto Raptors, who tremendously benefit from having Harrell backing up Siakam, given Pascal's anything but spicy 2020 playoffs. Two, the New Orleans Pelicans, who are still going to have some money to play with even after the signing of Brandon Ingram. And three, the Charlotte Hornets, who are desperate for star power. Harrell would work great alongside both ball handlers Graham and Rozier as a pick and roll partner, and his offensive impact from inside the paint could give the team another dimension to work with. Also, he and Rozier have already developed a relationship too, playing two seasons at the University of Louisville together, so I think Harrell's enticed by a hefty offer from Michael Jordan and becomes the newest Charlotte Hornet. Number one, Fred Van Vliet. This is a massive offseason for the Toronto Raptors. While they no longer have to worry about Pascal Siakam's contract extension, they have some decisions to make when it comes to the futures of Fred Van Vliet and Serge Ibaka, both of whom will be unrestricted free agents at season's end. With one of the rosters on their center, Marcus Gasol, leaving the NBA to play out his career in Spain, Toronto will make retaining Serge Ibaka their top priority. Meanwhile, the undrafted guard Fred Van Vliet has been extremely vocal about cashing in this summer. As John Hollinger of The Athletic noted, anything over $20 million annually for Van Vliet would make it really complicated for the Raptors to create max room in the summer of 2021 when the likes of Giannis Adetokounmpo, Drew Holiday, Rudy Gobert, and Victor Oladipo will hit free agency. New York should be willing to offer Van Vliet around a max deal, and considering Phoenix traded for a point guard and Detroit drafted a point guard, New York's front office should be able to put Freddie in Nick's threads, and he would fit beautifully spacing the defense next to RJ Barrett and running the pick and roll with Mitchell Robinson more than anything Van Vliet is a proven winner. For a team that hasn't made the playoffs for six years and counting, they could do much worse than signing a player with his pedigree to run their offense and usher in what the franchise hopes to be a new era of Knicks basketball. Miguel Cali Guirin earns the commenter shout out for saying that the most likely major trade is Westbrook to the Hornets. Great take. Go check out which blockbuster trade I think is most likely to happen in my last video. The question for next video shout out is, why or why not do you think one of these six NBA players is changing teams in free agency? Keep watching some of my recent uploads. You're the best for tuning in and sticking around. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.